Hey my geekers, Caitlin here, and for this week's YouTube video, I want to talk about tuberculosis. Uh, tuberculosis is a chronic infection of the bacteria called mycobacterium tuberculosis that can lead to many different complications, most commonly in the lungs. But first, I want to talk about the individuals who are most at risk for developing tuberculosis. So let's get started. So when I think about the patients who are at risk for exposure of TB, I like to separate them in three different categories. So the first category is patients who are at an increased risk for exposure to TB. The second category is patients who are in largely populated living conditions. And the third category is immunocompromised patients. So people who are at risk for exposure to TB would include immigrants from high risk populated areas and then healthcare workers who just see a lot of different types of people and then largely populated environments that include incarcerated patients, so in jails or prisons, and then patients who are in homeless shelters, and then immunocompromised patients would include any patients that currently have cancer, are receiving chemo, HIV patients, or any patients that have any comorbidities or drug or alcohol abuse. So when it comes to tuberculosis, this is a very extensive disease that can present in a variety of different ways, especially if it is a primary infection, so the initial infection, if it's chronic or latent TB, or if it's reactivation TB. And whenever a patient inhales the mycobacterium tuberculosis bacteria, a total of four things can occur from that point. So in best case scenario, the patient will expel the bacteria from the lungs and there will be no infection. Um, on the other side, you can have a primary infection of TB for which the patient will be contagious at that time. Um, or the bacteria can implant into the AVOI, um, confer no active infection, lay there dormant, and be controlled via granuloma formation by the body, and this is chronic or latent TB. Um, or the bacterium can be controlled and then reactivated when the patient becomes immunosuppressed in some type of way. Uh, for instance, HIV patients confer a higher reactivation rate of TB than most other patients do. When it comes to the signs and symptoms of tuberculosis, I like to think of tuberculosis as similar to a lung cancer presentation. So the patient will have the obvious pulmonary symptoms of shortness of breath, cough, and sometimes that pleuritic chest pain, but they will also have some constitutional-like symptoms of lung cancer, like fevers, chills, night sweats, and fatigue. And then sometimes in advanced disease, tuberculosis patients might have hemoptysis. Yet, just keep in mind that TB can definitely affect any organ of the body through the hematogenous or lymphatic spread. And at this point, it's called miliary TB. And through that hematogenous dissemination, you can have an acute case or more commonly subacute or chronic case. And the most common organs affected are obviously the lungs, where the chest x-ray will show these millet seed infiltrates, so these small round nodule infiltrates throughout the entire lungs, or it can affect the CNS, it can affect the liver, um, the lymphatic system, joints, it can affect the bones where it's called POTS disease, and sometimes the adrenal glands. When it comes to screening for tuberculosis, most people do a placement of a PPD, and the screening process for tuberculosis is highly tested on your boards, so make sure you pay close attention to the following information. And I'm sure if you're a healthcare worker, you've had a PPD placed to test for possible exposure, but what exactly is a PPD? First of all, PPD stands for purified protein derivatives, and the solution is based up of tuberculin units that when placed underneath the skin, creates a little wheel, and if the patient has antibodies to tuberculosis, there will be an inflammated area of induration from the cell-mediated response in the body, and patients who have had previous TB exposure should have this response and create a little place of induration. And I must stress that this place of induration is an elevation from the skin. So it's a little edema, it's a little wheel that forms from the reaction to the cell mediated response of that tuberculin skin units. So it's not erythema, it's induration that you're looking for for a positive PPD test. So first you place the PPD under the skin 
make a wheel like I told you previously, wait 48 to 72 hours to allow for your body's cell-mediated response to occur, then measure the induration, not the erythema you see on the skin. Most people will have no reaction and actually no erythema as well, but some patients will test positive with induration and the size of the induration depends on the type of patient involved. I would commit this to memory and especially remember that immunocompromised patients like HIV patients test positive at five millimeters of induration, healthcare workers test positive for 10 millimeters of induration, and regular patients at no increased risk will test positive at 15 millimeters of induration. And that's it guys, at least for the first part of the tuberculosis series. I want to give you some homework really quickly of some chest x-ray findings of certain types of TB. So stay tuned because next week we'll be covering the chest x-ray findings of certain types of TB as well as the treatment and common side effects of each treatment drug for tuberculosis. So stay tuned. Here we go. Okay guys, these are some classic chest x-rays of certain types of TB that I talked about in the beginning of this episode. Do some digging and find out which chest x-rays are associated with primary TB, reactivation TB, latent TB, and miliary TB. I'll talk about this next week, so see you then.